Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sean Tusi with Glow 3D Team, and today we're going to talk about how to use Dealer Basic in Glow 3D App. Glow 3D App is a media and content generation and distribution platform that helps car dealers generate and distribute contents from photos to videos to social media articles and posts. So without any further ado, let's get started. So as mentioned, we're going to talk about the most basic thing every dealer needs, and that's why we call it dealer basic, just photos. So every dealer needs to get a photos from their cars to put them, in, put them in their website or their social media or their inventory management. So what makes Glow 3D special, let's say comparing to a DSLR camera or a typical mobile app, is the ability to set what you want to take a photo from what angle as a standard and create a template for your company and then take your staff or yourself through step-by-step -step photography so there's no mistakes and create consistency when you post it in your website. The other huge advantage of Glow 3D is the ability to use AI advanced image processing for background removal. So we're gonna start. So as you see here, I have the recording of my screen. Um, I've done a series of settings that fits with my photography today, but uh, we will have a separate video that is gonna be somewhere in this link, if not in the description, where we'll take you to how to do the settings uh, in, in, in a super detailed uh, capture process. So we start, I press plus, the lower section. Now I'm gonna scan the VIN number. So when you scan the VIN number, what it does, it uh, uh, extracts the uh, information about the car, like make, model, uh, some other information, depends on what is available, and uh, you just point at it. It also takes a photo and adds it to the gallery uh, where you could decide if you wanna use it or not. So now we are going to uh, it's SUV, so overall exterior photos. Uh, based on what you did uh, in the setting, it will walk you through the steps you want to capture. Start with that. So the first uh, photo is uh, the passenger side view. So I'm going to go towards the passenger side. And you could change the order you capture in the city. So if your standard is to start from the front or back, you don't have to change the habit that you have in car photography. You could change the capture order in the setting. We have a separate um, video that walks you through the entire setting process. It should be either somewhere here um, in this video or in the description and you could look at it and it walks you through every single detail. So I'll start from here. Um, there are two different kinds of capture uh, where it could be the low point and high point. If you're just doing photography, low point typically is what you see in a higher quality uh, professional photographers and that's what we have today but you could also change it to the high point so what i mean by when we say high point is that you want to be the height of the the the, the roof uh, the ceiling the roof of the car and that means if you have a very uh, high truck then you might have to hold the phone up here if you have a set on car like this is here you might have to do it like this if you have a sport car let's say a porsche or a ferrari so you have to have the camera where the ceiling is and then the second point where we call it low point is typically where you have the door handle just slightly lower than where the door handle is and then if you're doing a super sport cars when you have it on setup on a low we recommend to go around where the rim is so if you're doing a super short sport cars and you want to have the the, that magic photo that captures the entire uh, beast form of a supercar, the best photography would be having your camera. So you really, it's like, it's like doing the photography like this. And at that time, you also have a feature called um, voice capture. And you could just say capture and it will automatically capture the phone. So if you have a voice activation system where you could basically just use your voice command, especially if you're in an uh, area where you get the snow during winter, today we have a good day, but if it's super cold, you could just go throughout the entire process without even having one click. So with that said, today we set it up on a low point. So that means the point of photography that I'll do will be all here. Starting with the passenger side, uh, I have the lens set up as wide angle. You could change that to any others. If you do have enough room uh, to do the photography, we do recommend to use wide angle. And the reason is that almost every phone, whether it's iPhone or Android, their standard lens, which is called wide in iPhone, and it might be tele in uh, Android, they have the best quality in terms of the sensor that captures the photo. So as long as you have enough space to be away from it, you can. If not, you could easily change that to ultra wide. I'm gonna just show you guys. This is now ultra wide, as you can see, I can get quite closer. The only disadvantage is that when you have it like this, you sort of see the car to get, like you can get much closer to it, but then you get it sort of a perspective, which if you can avoid, the overall photo will look much more professional. With that said, I do have enough space. I'm gonna just go with the with the wide angle and I'll just get it, as I mentioned, around where the, where the door handle is, um, getting into the car. And this is probably the goodest spot for me. So I do the capture. So here you could retake it if you like. You can adjust the lighting. Oh, there you go. I pressed retake. So I'm just gonna do it. It doesn't have to exactly match this, uh, but that sort of gives you a guideline of where you would like to capture. You could change the lighting. Um, you could actually, 
uh, improve um, the overall enhancement of the photo in this section, um, which you could also set this up in the setting. Again, another thing that you could have by default. If you'd like your colors to be more colorful, more vivid, have a higher hue, you could set that up at uh, this setting in, um, in, in, a, in a higher value, so it automatically applies that color enhancement in every photo you do. So I'm gonna go to the next one. Again, you could change the order of capture. You could decide what to capture. We have by default eight photos. So this is what we see the most common angle. If you're doing it sort of a 45, it's not exact 45. And don't forget, this is a low point. So I'm gonna just bring it low and I have wide angle. So, uh, but let's say for any reason you don't like this angle and you typically like to do it like this, right? Uh, it's absolutely fine. Over the same overlay, you could you could basically choose any angle. We're still gonna automatically position it properly. It's just that we chose the most common one to show the photographer what is the angle they have to capture. But if you want to have it exactly 45, you could absolutely do it. There is no problem in that. You could just let your team know that this is your standard that you're gonna use in your company. So the next one, I'll use this, the driver's side. And again, you could you could change this to sort of make it more standard walking around. So I'm gonna retake because I forgot to do it low point. The 45. So the only rule really in these photographies is that you want to see the entire car. So you don't have to match it again to the, to the green line. It could be a smaller like this, or, or it could even be like coming out of it. And it's absolutely fine. As long as like, you don't want to take a photo like this, right? Because now you're miss missing part of the car um, and we won't be able to fix it. So I would just come here. Even this is absolutely fine. And now I have the front. Again, I do low point. And uh, one general note for photography is that the best time of photography is a time like this, where you have cloudy, if you can show the sky, it's cloudy. So you don't see a lot of direct sun. And uh, because of that, you have a nice consistent diffusion of light. You get also this early in the morning or you get it more towards the afternoon, you would get the same light condition. So that's the best time if you were doing to do the photography, do it either very early in the morning or do it very late in the afternoon or do it when it is closing or do it when the sun is exactly up in the sky. The advantage of having sun exactly in the sky is that because it's at the highest point, you will not see it in the camera. So it's not gonna create the light, um, uh, like contrast light that typically you see the sun and, and your photo becomes washed up. Doesn't, that does not happen. The other thing is that um, when you, you're gonna get the light, the coloring of all the sites, very similar in terms of brightness, you get a little bit much lighter in the ceiling, but that's not the most part of, important part of the car. When you do it at let's say three o'clock, four o'clock, when you have sun in a 45 degree angle, you get one side of car very light and then the other side suddenly becomes very dark which our, our system automatically adjusts that. But if you can do it in a way you have more consistent lighting, obviously that would be the best choice. With that said, the next one is exterior close-ups. So I have the door, door, driver door open. The same scenario, you could change the default um, lens. You could change the uh, capture order, and then you could also change the display order. That means the way we're gonna send it. You might wanna capture it in a different order. Uh, that is easy, uh, less time consuming for your team, but then you want to display it, send it to your inventory management and display it in your website in a different way. So the good thing about our platform is that you can set those up as the standard of your company and it just automatically happens. The engine, the roof. So as you can see, the advantage is that the photographer doesn't have to think does not have to remember, they just have to follow the screen, which becomes very important if you hire somebody and they are new. Or if you're doing it yourself, and would just like to follow the screen. Next is interior close-ups. We start with the uh, entertainment center. Again, the same thing, you could change that. You could use different lens. I'm gonna use wide, and you could change that in the setting, so that happens. So I'm gonna do this one that uh, but I'm going to zoom in because I want to focus on the entertainment. And then we have the instrument cluster. So I could do it at the front, I could do it at the back. Uh, there is an option where you could capture the entire front. We didn't have that here, but you're welcome to add that to your capture. So I'm going to use wide. But again, once you do this once, you could understand and you could decide what would you like your standard of photography for each section to be. And we're done. In the last screen, the system shows you the option for sitting. You could choose private or public. When something is private, it's not gonna sync it to your inventory management. Waits for you to do a, some sort of a final quality control if you like. 
but most of the time we do recommend do the public so it can get synced into your inventory management and into your website as soon as the process is done. On the right, you can ch change the image. Um, you can obviously do this in the setting so that it automatically gets done. And uh, here you could choose if you want to have a background image or blur background, or you want to keep it original and just do the alignment, which most of the time uh, we have background image set as the default. So as a standard, once you have the setting done and you decide what your background is only once, through our initial onboarding process, you should not do any changes most likely into this page. And all you have to do is click save and you are done. We are gonna come back, show you how this image looks like once the process of background removal is complete. Thank you for watching. So now that we have completed the capture, we're uh, logging into our sample account and this is our capture. So as you can see, the background is, is removed. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. And these are the individual photos that we captured. I'm going to try to zoom in to show you guys the level of the uh, the level of the details and the quality we have. Um, we're going to do another one here where you could see the the, the the amount of details that this captures. I think it's pretty good based on using a mobile and we line it up properly with the background. Again, the background could be so many different options. We have a separate video, as I mentioned before, that focuses on, on settings and how you could you could change this. So this is a result. You will get this about five minutes, five to 10 minutes after you complete that pet captures. And then we will automatically uh, sync this with your entire inventory management and uh, your website. Uh, and uh, if you have selected, we'll automatically generate a video tour uh, out of this and we automatically post it as a new inventory management if you guys are using our social media service. So um, the whole idea is that you spend a little, very little time and then this automatically prepares these documents the way you see it here. Uh, we redo the shadows, even actual windows. Um, we create a transparency so you would be able to see what's what's on the other side, not just let's say parking or, or different, different sections, but the actual view of what's in the background. Uh, so with that said, this uh, sort of completes our dealer basic, uh, which the main focus is really just the good quality photos, replacing the background and having a nice presentation. Thank you for watching.